Welcome. I feel terrible today, Josh. I could tell. You know why? Why? I only watched one of the two movies. Oh. And you know what? Which one it was? It was the really bad one. <laughs> How can you say that if you've only seen one? I guarantee it wasn't worse than the monster. Are you sure about that? Okay. Well, Are let's... you sure about that? <laughs> That's an underrated meme. It is. I feel like it was a little too short lived. We should bring that one back. Yeah, I think so. So let's get into to get into talking about it. our two movies today are cut rate Ooh. action movies. What? <laughs> cut bank is that the name of it? Yeah, cut bank starring Dwayne Montana. Johnson and Dwayne Johnson. Dwayne Johnson and uh, John Romero starring Thor's brother and a girl that kind of looks like Christian Stewart, but a knockoff. Cool. And John wanna, Malkovich. Which one do you want to talk about first? Let's talk about Cut Bank. Okay. I, I'll let you take the lead on this one. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you what I think Cut Bank is. Okay. I, I read this, this synopsis. So it's, it's about Liam Hensworth, who's like this backwoods country boy. He's kind of down on his luck, right, in Montana. And it says he witnesses a horrible crime. I want to say... It's a. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna run down the whole plot. Just like keep your comments to yourself. And I want to see how right I can get. I want to see the horrible crimes, like a a a, uh, a robbery, maybe. And he, he decides that he since he's down on his luck, he needs to start committing crimes, maybe robberies to. To to like pay pay the bills, pay the, girlfriend whatnot. And it goes, it like he gets a, a sheriff after him, and that's John Malkovich. And ultimately, they get caught, and it's like a Bonnie and Clyde thing. And it's also kind of like a hell or high water thing, but not as interesting. How close? <laughs> I guess I didn't make any I didn't make any bold claims, so it's like I'm probably mostly right. But is it is it about robbery? No. Okay. <laughs> so I was wrong there. What is it about? Let me let me paint a scene. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Welcome to Cup Bank, Montana, a beautiful place in Montana. You got Liam Hemsworth. Thor's brother, and you've got this girl that likes him for some reason, and then he sees murder. He sees murder. It's a straight up murder. Nice. It's a, it's a postman. He gets murdered. Cool. This is neighborhood post boy. All right. Man, old guy gets murdered, and then he films it because oh coincidence. So it's like a nightcrawler thing. No. Okay. Um, and then. <laughs> And then uh, you find out later, spoiler alert, um, it's, it's not good. And then Chris, Liam, Chris Hemsworth decides, hey, I'm going to turn my camera in and get uh, $100,000 because I have evidence for a postal worker's disappearance and or death. Okay. And then you were like, oh, he set it up the whole time because it's obvious. Okay. Because it's bad. Okay. <laughs> so, what, what was your overall opinion of this movie? But you didn't get. You didn't even let me get to my favorite part. Oh, what's the, the good part? My my favorite part is there's a creepy man that lives out in the woods, and he taxidermies people. Is that Bruce Dern? No. Okay. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, probably. I don't know. Was it an old names. man? No. Oh, probably not Bruce Dern then. It's the guy that was in Shape of Water. Oh, Sally Fields. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Was that her name from Shape of Water? I'm probably wrong. <laughs> Hold on. But no, uh, it's not good. It's more interesting than I thought it would be. No, but it's de that's definitely not the one from Shape of Water. Okay. Uh, no. Who is it? She was in Forrest Gump. Oh. <laughs> And Lincoln. Oh, I'm good. Okay. Great. What's the what's the hold on? Who's the shape of water girl? Sally Hawkins, that's it. Oh, I was okay. So it was Sally Hawkins in the woods? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, she's like this recluse in the woods who wants her mail, but the mailman 
got done got shot but not actually shot because it was oh. a fake crime because they were going to try to make a hundred thousand dollars it's great um okay. anyway so she runs and she goes and taxidermies her family and she's looking for a parcel <laughs> parcel that the mailman had for her yeah but okay. then he, he done got shot, but not really shot. And then she goes on a killing spree and just murders everybody. It's great. Sounds like a fun movie. Uh, the only good parts are when people are actually getting murdered. Okay. Like, those are the only actually interesting parts for me. All right. Um, otherwise, none of the characters were really likable. The entire idea is that, oh, small towns are so good, you know. You're never going to want to leave a small town because they got people that know you and respect you and will help you out whenever you need. Yeah. You hear? I can uh, I can relate. Anyway, I hated it. Yeah. Um, but well, I didn't hate it as much as the monster. Yeah. Um, so your your pitch of uh, Cut Bank is, means nothing to me because I'm going to see it regardless, of course. Yes. But uh, good to know that... <clears throat> It's going to be a boring movie with some occasionally fun murder. Yeah, and there's, okay. a, there's a couple funny parts. John Malkovich is really good. Okay. Because well, John Malkovich can't not be really good. Oh, yeah, no. John Malkovich, he improves anything he's in. So really. throughout the entire movie, I'm just waiting to see John Malkovich and Sally Hawkins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's the whole movie for me. Cause so you say Sally Hawkins? Who was it actually? It, the the doctor, the Russian man. Oh, um, from Shape of Water. Right. I don't right. know his He's name. He's in a lot of stuff, though. I forget his name. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so this movie, from what I know, from the nice trivia section on IMDb, was rated one of the top movies to be put on the shelf for screenplays, and just not used for like, years. What, which one? Cut Bank. Or? Cut Bank. Okay. So it's like it's like an it's like a it's like a black I, it's like an yeah right script. um we actually did another one of those in uh, movie cl- it not movie clip we also did another one of those back when we were oh no this was our very first A twenty four quest episode or was it the sea of trees is what I'm trying to say not our very first that was a long time ago though. okay the sea of trees is another one of those it, it was um. It I was like this. It was this more. this screenplay that nobody wanted to make, and like, it just kind of, occasionally, eventually, a director was like, oh, "I'll give it a shot." You know what I'll say? There was a couple really pretty shots. Okay. Well, that's that's often the case with these A twenty four movies. At the very least, they can make them pretty. Yeah. yeah. There was a couple pretty shots in the monster too. Yeah, there was. Yeah. Anyway, so... Do you want so, to move on to the monster? Let me just give a quick wrap-up. Uh, okay. Cool. Cut Bank, I didn't like it. I feel like I'm biased, though, because it had a lot of themes that I just dislike normally. All right. Uh, small towns. Mm. <laughs> Being perceived as, like, something that's really great. Mm. But also kind of... Anyway, never mind. Just don't watch it. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's talk about the monster, which you also shouldn't watch. Um, the monster, I absolutely hated the monster. Um, a lot of times I'll, I can find, like, some redeeming quality about it. It's not good at all. Do you all. remember that part where she slapped her kid? I do, yeah. I kind of laughed, and then I felt bad. Uh, here's the, okay, so the monster is about a woman and her child. It's kind of like Room, but it's a weird horror movie. And worse. And worse. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a very negative week, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh... Oh, I almost said room. The monster's about, like, a woman and her child, and the woman's, like, very... uh, Just an awful person. Just a terrible person. Yep. And the child is just traumatized as a result of it. And they get in a car accident. They hit a wolf. And then they... The rest of the movie's there in the car. And if if I could appreciate... One thing about this movie, it's that the majority of it takes place in one small location. And I like that in movies. Did you know? Yeah. Because I look up in the trivia section every time we do these. Mm. That that patch of road was built specifically in the middle of the woods just for that filming. Wow. It's pretty neat. Cool. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, also, <laughs> the, the monster, uh, spoiler alert, but who cares. The monster itself looked practical. 
Oh, very practical. Yeah. But not good. Yeah, see, that I was going to say, I was going over to my head, and I was like, I got to give it points for the, the monster being like a dude in a suit or like a big puppet. But the issue but was the is thing it is, looked like a dude in a suit. Yeah, exactly. It had that... I, I almost felt like they were trying to give it the, the movement, this unnatural quality to give it that like un, uncanny valley creepiness, but it's just... I wasn't unnerved by the way it moved. I just thought that looks really fake. <laughs> well, it's not big. Yeah. <laughs> it's not incredibly dangerous because it can just be like, ref- just get, go away. I got a flashlight. Well, it kills four people. Okay. But that, but theirs can kill four people. That's true. But you know what? That's not going to stop them. A flashlight in their eyes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um. There's. There's just. I just don't know what to say about this movie. It's just really bad. Oh, let's explain why it's bad. First of all, I don't care... About anybody. About anybody. The The daughter I kind of sympathize with because she's she has to put up with this awful mother. Yeah. And you and you know immediately that like the mother's probably going to die and the daughter's going to be the one to survive. Like I, I figured that out like 10 minutes into it. Mm-hmm. And, of course, that is what happens, and, um, you just don't care about anything. Like, like, it, it does this thing where characters come on, and you're like, well, this is just, they're just, they they're just, just fodder. Ex- they, they're fodder, they just exist to die. Yeah. There are, uh, a few other characters besides the main characters, and they just come on, they just got, like, this big red target painted right on their chest for the monster to come out and get them. Yeah. They're running out, screaming <laughs> so, into the woods, like, what's going on so here? So it's completely non-impactful. And the characters never act like real people, and they never make rational... <laughs> like, they never make realistic decisions. I was gonna say they don't make rational decisions, but it's like... I could forgive characters not making rational decisions in a highly dangerous situation like this, but they don't make realistic decisions. They do, like, like later on in the movie, the, the, the daughter flamethrowers the, uh, the monster, yeah. and then, like, as and it's, as it's lying on the ground. it instantly works. Yeah. It instantly works. Apparently he's super flammable when yeah. it's raining outside. It's great. Yeah, he's probably really moist because it's been raining pre- previously, but he just bursts into a big bowl of, bowl I don't of flames. Maybe maybe the all. monster's really flammable. Maybe he's covered in oil. But why, though? <laughs> it's, it was, I don't know, just because they needed something to happen. There was nothing to and tell then, us any of this until it <laughs> happened, and then when it happened, I was just sitting there in disbelief. I'm yeah. like, this is nonsense. Then the daughter... Then the daughter she's like her mom's dead the creature's on the ground this is her chance to leave and find help (laughs) and she just goes up to the monster and sits next to it not for like a couple seconds but like for way too long and the camera keeps showing the monster's dead face i'm like okay like you're you're trying you're you're trying your best to like really really scream at me there's gonna be a jump scare coming up and and i hate it when mo- horror movies do that you're like if this scene ends with a jump scare the director of this movie just doesn't know what they're doing my favorite scenes are when the daughter just tries to run up to the monster and just wax it yeah and that right. happens like three times oh yeah they devise this plan <laughs> the mom's like i'm gonna go out as bait and you're gonna you're gonna escape and then the daughter oh and then the God. mom goes out as bait first of all all right so we know this monster's scared of the light, and the mom's plan is, I'm going to take the light out and draw it towards me with the light, and while you're going to run away without a light, and it's going to come after me and not you. Like, that well, doesn't no, make any sense. put out the torch. Yeah, the torch, right. Yeah, she's like, go now, put out the torch. So it made sense, it just was bad. Did she put out the torch? I think so, yeah. Oh, I, I didn't even see it. Okay. And then she said run, and then she done got mauled to death. But then I the laughed. daughter doesn't run. She just and, Yeah, no, the daughter just doesn't run, and then after a little bit of the mom getting mauled, she runs out with, like, a pipe and just starts yeah. wailing on the monster. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the funniest <laughs> thing ever. And then it's, I, it's like this eight-year-old girl who just then gets smacked, and it's yeah. just... <laughs> It's just funny. Um, the monster only attacks when it's convenient to the plot. There's so many points in this movie where it's like, 
why didn't the monster just kill them right then? I mean, we're meant to assume it's, like, always watching, right? Like, it's yeah, just stalking I them. The, it's, like, it knocks over the ambulance, which, may I remind you, had, like, the, the window has been knocked out. There's no window. Mm -hmm. And they're unconscious inside of the ambulance. And then they wake up, presumably, like, an hour later or something like that. Yeah. Just sitting out in the, in the open. The monster just hasn't come near them, apparently. Maybe it's just trying to toy with them or something. I don't know. But it kills the mom, like, immediately once they leave the ambulance. So it's not really interested in toying with them. It's just trying to hunt them as prey, I'd assume. Well, and I just... This monster is very inconsistent. Yeah, to it begin is. With. It is very inconsistent. Like, it hurts a wolf, but doesn't kill it. Yeah. And then the wolf gets hit by a car, right? Yeah. Okay, so it, it, it can bite, but not kill a wolf. But then well, it can it, rip off a man's arm... Maybe, well, I mean, I don't know. And that, then it can knock over an entire ambulance. Maybe that part <laughs> didn't bother me. It's like there's plenty of variables. Maybe it intended to use the wolf as like a trap for the car. Maybe oh, it, my God. Maybe it, maybe it, the wolf like put up a decent fight because it's not an idiot like the human characters. And they're like, I don't I know. I mean, I doubt it. <laughs> Like oh, there's I just, also the I thing. I doubt all of everything the monster can do because it's so inconsistent. All this movie knows how to do is horror cliches, but it doesn't take a moment to like realize how they can like happen in the reality of the movie. Like how they how you can make these horror cliches believable in the reality of this movie. For example, um, when they when the guy disappears, Jesse the 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 guy that I knew was going to die, and I was like, this guy looks like way more likable than the two main characters. It's yeah. like, I know he's going to die. I wish the monster would have killed the two main characters and then Jesse's the protagonist for the rest of the movie. I would have the actually guy liked tries that. to come and help. Yeah, right. <laughs> that would be a real bummer. Yeah. Um, but then he, he disappears, and it's like, okay, the monster killed him, but they're like, where is he? And then there's the jump scare, the obvious jump scare of the severed arm landing on the hood of the vehicle. Hey, do you remember when they did a callback to that, when they dropped a body on the ambulance? Yeah, and the same the same scare. The different. same exact scare. Except the, the arm falling on the top of the hood makes zero sense. What was the monster, like, up in a tree? And yeah, they no, just he's, trying to, he's, down he's trying to spook you. Uh, yeah. He's like, hey, this will be funny. Let's throw an arm at their faces. It's great. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. the body doesn't make any sense either. Let's throw a body at the windshield. You It'll could, spook them. You could absolutely... You could explain this away by, ex like... It, th th this is a case where, like, they didn't explain anything about the monster, and it's, like, it hurts the he's logic of the movie. because it's incredibly like, inconsistent. Yeah, it's like, is it intelligent enough to scare them rather than actually killing them? I don't think so, because it does a lot of dumb mistakes. Yeah. Like, so I don't think so, but it, it... But it has good accuracy. Yeah, it can throw an arm across the entire forest. And like I said um, earlier, from a cinematography standpoint... There are a handful of good shots. Not the entire movie looks good. I mean, it, most of it was, like, really dark. Kind of hard to see everything, anything. Uh, but there are a couple of okay shots. Um, like, poster shots. You know, like, like wallpaper shots. Just, just out of nowhere, occasionally, it's like, here's a really pretty shot. Now back to the, the boring cinematography of the rest of it. And... Do you remember those memory sequences that were all bad? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Where they're just screaming at everyone all yeah. the time. Just yeah. just to sink in how bad everybody's See, life is. Here's the main issue with this movie is that... I think this movie could have worked if they focused more on the horror element of it and tried to make it less of a character drama. Because ultimately it is a character drama... That just out of nowhere turns into a horror movie. And then it continues to be a character drama while this like horror movie plot's happening. And that hurt the movie because the characters aren't... You don't care about the characters. You know, and it's like, as, despite them trying to make you care about the characters. And at the end, I feel like you're supposed to sympathize with the mom because she decides to sacrifice herself for the daughter. It's like... I don't know. I don't know if that's a good enough redemption for this character because she's just such an awful human being. <laughs> yeah. Like it's just uh, all of a sudden she she decides she's gonna sacrifice her life for the daughters. Like the whole movie, she 
I what is with her making her daughter do everything for her? Is that a thing that like mothers do? Like abusive mothers do? I mean, the idea is that this kid is being very grown up while her mother is being very childish and getting yeah. drunk and getting high and sleeping the day away and not doing anything productive or good. Yeah. And so then her child should just do it because well, no, but I raised like, you. Every time there's something important to be done, like when they crash, she makes the daughter call 911. She makes the daughter leave the car to check if it's like safe to go out. Well, I think the idea was that either her door was stuck or yeah. that her wrist was hurt so that she didn't want to open it on that Why side. Why use the other hand? It's stupid. <laughs> you know, I understand. It's stupid. Um, and it's like, I, I actually thought that they were trying to imply she couldn't do things because her wrist was hurt. But it's like, there's this one scene where she's like, you need to call your dad with the phone. And then I think like, I don't know maybe her wrist is hurt so she can't properly dial the phone or something but then it shows her smoking a cigarette like as the daughter's on the phone so it's like clearly she can operate things with two hands oh, yeah so i it's stupid that's that's the answer i i i don't know i guess she was just making the daughter do these things to to train her to how to respond in an emergency situation you're or giving it way too much credit or maybe they just had the daughter <laughs> do these things for a the sake of tension and a b the sake of drama because it's like you're watching the daughter do the things so you're more connected well i remember the mom was trying to get out of the car on her side and it wasn't working either because of the wrist or the door or whatever um and that makes sense why you'd have the daughter get out but sure. still, that's pretty shitty. But even before the accident, she has her daughter do everything. She no, like... and one, that's just being, you know, a lazy-ass mom. Yeah. <laughs> you remember that scene where they, where the mom was just screaming, fuck you, at her child, and yeah. the child's like, you can't talk and to me And then she like leaves, leaves the kid. And then the kid's like, fuck you! Yeah. <laughs> and then she just leaves, is like, find your own ride. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what? It's like, okay. I get, like, I don't think this is a bad thing on the part of the movie because they're trying to establish that it's just an awful relationship between these two, but it's just, I don't know. I don't think the actors were good enough to make it, like, convincing. It wasn't. Because <laughs> I, I don't think the daughter wasn't a great actor, but, like, I'll give her a little credit because she's, you know, clearly a, a child. Not, not like, a very young child, but, then like... Then again, we have to think, what were they working with? Because yeah. as far as, like, the script goes and as far as, ev like, everything they did in the movie, like, I can't understand how they could have acted necessarily better. I suppose. In a so lot of situations. So maybe it's the script's fault, but I didn't get the sense that the, the mom was a very phenomenal actor. Oh, by no means. But still, like, the script they were working with doesn't seem to be anything special yeah. either. So... Ultimately, do you have anything else to say about the monster? Should we just keep tearing into it? or uh, um, is It's it bad kind of and I don't it? like it. Yeah? I would have rather seen The Thing again. And I like The Thing. Yeah. So that's not a... That's a better monster. Yeah, right. Better monster and it came out like 30 years beforehand. Yeah, better practical effects. Yep. Better horror. Mm-hmm. Better characters. This is a better movie. Watch the thing if you want like a good uh, practical monster movie. It's so good. Yeah. And not, then I gotta watch the new one too. I've heard it's not as good, but no, I still want to watch it. Yeah, it's not. Uh, anyway, about the monster. Um, shame about this movie. Bad um, out of not. It's good. absolutely one of like <laughs> near the bottom for me. Um, I'm it's, still. It's, it's still down ab there. Above the captive. Above tusk. But above and beyond that, I don't know. It I might still be have more fun than this than... I still have more fun than this than Ginger and Rosa. Okay. Ginger and Rosa. At least this part had some parts where I laughed when the daughter kept running out with a oh, pipe yeah. and whacking There's the actually monster. certain scenes in this oh. that were like comedy routines. And I, I, don't, were, I don't get They're well. not intentional. Guaranteed not intentional. Yeah, I suppose. I, I guess not. I, I probably... It definitely wasn't. I just, I just laughed. Like when they're talking on the phone and then like the daughter's trying to like tell the the where they are and the mother keeps talking over her and it's just the two of them talking right in tandem mm -hmm. i guess the point of that is for 
to show how chaotic the situation is, but is honestly just funny. I think you're still giving it too much credit. No, I think that was the intention. <laughs> I think that was the intention, but they didn't pull it off. Oh, it doesn't thing. feel like it. <laughs> well, what do you think? Do you think they're trying to make it funny? No, I think it was just stupid. Okay. I, I think they just didn't know what they were doing, and they decided to make a dumb movie. Mm. Um so, well, yeah. I can see it on the screenplay. Just like they start talking over one another to like build the tension because they're both really panicked. Okay, I want to get a copy of this screenplay and then <laughs> yes. I want to remake it. <laughs> yeah. We're just gonna use an iPhone. And I feel some, like I can make this movie recording better. Quality. It's gonna I've, be great. I just simply from like laying off the uh, the cliches and like shooting it better and like, writing slightly better dialogue, I feel like I can make this movie better. Can we have every scene with the monster just be Charlie? Charlie, the, yeah. Charlie's the monster. Yeah. Have dress him up in a monster costume. <laughs> no, it's just him. Just him. <laughs> Imagine like we're out on like one of the gravel it's like roads Charlie... or something, and it's like, oh my god, what is that? And it just like. Cuts and it's just Charlie standing in the road. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With like a man's arm laying next to him. It'll be good. Yeah. Anyway, so keep an eye out for when we re release the monster 2018. Yep. Uh, late this year. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I liked Cut Bank better. So I'm, I'm guessing you'll probably like Cut Bank better too when you probably. watch it. Uh, so this is, so Cut Bank wins this episode. Yeah. Um, the monster, I don't want to see it ever again. I don't really Except want to see Except when we rewatch it to remake it. I, no, we're not watching it. We're just going to go off the, oh, yeah. the direct script <laughs> yeah. that we go and buy. Um, so yeah, Cut Bank is better, but I still wouldn't want to watch it again. I'd rather watch Being John Malkovich because I haven't seen that. Oh yeah. Uh, let's let's go to the regular podcast now because this was just all. Well, we negative. gotta we gotta talk about our next week's movies. Whoa! I suppose you're right, my man. Yeah, let's you watch gotta, some. You gotta pick. You gotta pick your thing there. I know. I so, can tell you what our chronological movie is. I can too, my boy. It's Ex Machina. It's Ex Machina. So this is where the list gets interesting, and I'll tell you why. Ex Machina was the first A24 movie I ever watched. The I very saw, first. Yes, I saw it in the theater in uh, 2015. I so think it was probably mine that too. means we have now covered every single movie that came out before I was before the first movie that introduced me to A twenty four. So everything after this was stuff that I'm likely aware of because because I started to follow their releases after I watched Ex Machina and I've heard of a good portion of the ones that came after it. So now we're in a portion where we're. Out of the old stuff that I've never heard of, most of which is eh. Some of it is like pretty good, but most of it's eh. And we're into the post Ex Machina era where they were starting to get like mainstream. So, all right, I'm well, excited. Let's, I'm let's, very excited. Let's take a quick peek. What movie do you think I should do? Let's take let's take a take a look. You anything's look. better than either of the two we just watched. That's probably true. Yeah. <sighs> it's a real bummer, though. I was really hoping that one of these would be pretty good. Yeah. And neither of them really. Well, uh, the it. more I looked into the monster, I wasn't. I didn't have high hopes for it, and it, you know, it still disappointed me. Yeah. That was a. That was a disappointment. Let's watch the sea of trees again. Actually, you know what? <clears throat> I've been hearing a lot of chat in the in the Discord lately. Um, can we do this one? Is that one on there? Yeah. Okay. So I've been hearing a lot of chat about it. So let's do the Florida Project. Florida. The Florida Project. Um, you know, I haven't seen it, and I've been really looking forward I'm, to seeing some William Defoe. I'm pretty sure we can find William. A way to watch it. William Defoe. Yeah. Now I think I'm pretty sure we can find a way to watch it. And if we can't find a, a copy of it, I don't know if it's out on DVD yet. We will revise our plan next week and let yeah, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so we'll we'll hopefully see the Florida Project. Um, if not, you'll know first thing next week. Yeah. Oh, cool. Or we'll put it in the Discord and then you'll know. I Spoiler alert for next week. I have seen X Mach and it is very good. Same. So... Look forward to better just better times. Better times. And I hear Florida Project's really good, too. So we'll have a fun, fun week. So it'll just be all up and up from here. Yeah. Ex except, uh, well, 
What's the What's the next bad movie we're gonna that get we to? know about? Yeah, it's gonna be the Adderall Diaries. I think is that a thing? Have you do you know about that? I hear it's not good. Okay. Yeah, but that's a while. That's a ways away. So we're it's just gonna be fun times and happy faces. Fun. <laughs> For, for this next week. Because, yeah, as far as I know, like, I don't know if any of these are good or bad yet. Yeah. The Adderall Diaries? Who's that? Who's in that? <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? That's uh, James Franco. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Okay. But Any, yeah. Anywho. Um, oh, you know that? Oh, shit. I just blasted my eyes with brightness because my phone. Thanks, phone. No, but anyway, so then after Ex Machina, you know what we have to do, right? What? Michael Fassbender sesh. Mike Fassbender said. Yeah, we got oh, right. Slow West, and um, we've already decided it was going to be the other one with Michael Fassbender. You know, that one with Michael Fassbender. Trust Pass Trespass Against, against us. us. Yeah. So okay, that'll be cool. cool. Do we have the next couple of weeks planned then? Almost. Not for Barely Lethal, which then that'll be your pick for Barely Lethal, okay? Barely Lethal, sure. So Michael Fassbender isn't your pick. So Barely Lethal Week will be your pick. Okay. And then Amy, we're going to be doing with Supersonic, so then that won't be my pick. My pick will be with End of the Tour. Okay, sweet. So cool. And End of Tour, we're uh, we're really looking forward to. I I definitely am. So yeah, we're definitely coming up then. You know, I just saw, of the A24 movies that are out, um, I've seen over half of them now. So Cool. Yeah. We're, 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 we're getting there. We're working it. Yep. So, uh, and some the, of them are good. Yeah, some of them. <laughs> uh, that, I, was, I just wanted to give a statement, um, actually, about the, the, the idea behind A24 Quest, because I, like, I feel like people, spe- specifically those who like the A24 movies they've seen, the ones that have gotten like good reviews and whatnot, might be confused about this series. Because we talk about a lot of bad movies, and this is uh, this is a good episode to bring it up. I love A24, not because all the movies are great, but because it's a it's a varied catalog of movies. I actually like the fact that every once in a while... Well, I mean, it sounds odd to say I like the fact that every once in a while I'm forced to watch a bad movie, but... It's not. It, it it makes the uh, the diamonds in the rough more that much brighter. Yes, right. Yeah. And it's it's an it's an odd relationship I have. I to a certain extent I like watching bad movies, even those that aren't fun bad, because it's a great chance to find out why. Yeah, it's yeah. a great chance to flex your um, critical thinking abilities when it comes to movies. Well, that's why when I when I see a movie I haven't heard of in A24, I don't look up ratings beforehand. I don't look up reviews beforehand. I just try to make my own opinion about it. And then sometimes I look it up and I find that the general consensus is way different from what I feel about it. But I'm satisfied because my opinion is my opinion alone. So that's why there's still value in this series, even though we have weeks like this where there's nothing good to talk about. You heard it first. Colin said there's value in The Captive. Yes, there is value in the captain because that's how not to do a movie. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I think that's that's a very good way of putting it. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. Um, look, it's it's funny that that the monster was so bad for a second it made me question the entire A twenty four quest, <laughs> and then I was Jeez. I was thinking about it and I was like, no, no, we're good, we're good. You know what? I'm I'm very committed to this and. Uh, I mean, we're over we're, halfway there, right? Yeah, right. We're over halfway there. We're 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 doing good. And the rest of the movies that we know about, either most of them have been received as good. Yeah. So yeah. I mean, that's we're on the up and up, man. Sure. Yeah. And I mean, I think A twenty four. Um, the the more recent we get, the more the better the movies get. It seems. I that's at least that's my impression. I mean, the monster is a pretty recent movie, though. So that's true. There's always going to be bad ones, but. Thanks for watching thus far, and uh, we'll see you again next week. Adios. Yay. Yay. Yay.